Salam. My name is Hisham Abad. I'm a physicist by training. In this video, I will be presenting my book titled Towards an Islamic Lunar Solar Calendar. I published the book in January 2021 with Amazon's Kindle and Google's Books. It is not available in a paper edition yet. My book is the outcome of a 15-year research effort. I wanted to understand the reasons for the differences between the Islamic calendar, officially known as the Hijri calendar, and all contemporary and ancient calendars. I found the differences to be so stark, to the point where I now claim that the Hijri calendar is not a calendar at all, but is a time counting system. All ancient civilizations invented the calendar to pace their activities with the climatic seasons, which in turn were intimately associated with the complexities of the Earth's motion in its orbit around the sun. The astronomical phenomena, which are related to the seasons and the calendar year, include the phases of the moon, the cardinal points of the apparent motion of the sun, which are the two solstices and the two equinoxes, and the various stars and star constellations. The scant historical records about the inception of the Hijri calendar have been studied a countless number of times over the past 14 centuries. When I started my research, it seemed there was nothing new to learn about this topic. I, however, and for the first time, use the science of archaeoastronomy, which is a branch of astronomy that studies the physical alignment of ancient monuments and architecture with respect to astronomical phenomena. The purpose is to uncover hidden information about the ancient civilizations. The study of the Stonehenge site, located south of London, and the pyramids of Egypt are famous examples. In my case, I applied the methods of archaeoastronomy astronomy to study the evolution of the Hijri calendar from its predecessor, the ancient Arabian calendar. In doing so, I studied the geographical layout of the major religious shrines in Mecca and their alignment with respect to the cardinal points of the apparent motion of the sun, mainly with the sunrise and sunset on the day of the summer solstice the longest day of the year. I believe I discovered vital information about the pagan pre-Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca called the Hajj and its relationship to the Islamic Hajj. To explain the theme of my book, let me define some simple terms. First, the solar year. Its length is about 365 days and a quarter of a day, crucially a quarter of a day. This is the time the Earth takes to make a full revolution around the sun. On the other hand, the Gregorian calendar year has a length of 365 days exactly. Second, the Hijri year. Its length is 12 lunar months, with each lunar month having an average length of about 29 and a half days. The length of the Hijri calendar year is thus equal to 354 days. Since the 12 months of the Gregorian calendar year add up to only 365 days, it is shorter than the solar year by a quarter day. As you know, we account for the missing quarter day by adding a day to February every four years, changing its length to 29 days instead of 28. This is done to ensure that the start of the Gregorian year does not slip to start earlier. This process is called intercalation. Please remember this word. In comparison, the Hijri calendar lunar year is shorter than the solar year by a whopping 11 days. Then, to intercalate lunar calendars, civilizations, including the pre-Islamic Arabs learned that they had to add a full 13th lunar month approximately every three years to keep the positions of their months fixed with respect to the solar year and thus with respect to climatic seasons. The Hijri calendar, which is classified as purely lunar, which means it is not associated with the solar year, the result in its months rotate within the solar year. As you probably know, Ramadan, the fasting month, of Muslims starts earlier by 11 days every year. Of course, this also means that the Hijri year and all its months start earlier by 11 days. So if Ramadan starts in the spring, like what is happening this year, it will slide earlier to occur in winter in about eight years. Then it will start occurring in fall and then in summer. In comparison, the northern hemisphere, in the northern hemisphere June is always associated in our minds with the heat of summer and January with the cold of winter. Just imagine, according to the Hijri calendar, as years pass, your birthday will occur in all seasons of the year. 
In intercalated lunar calendars called lunisolar calendars, the intercalated year contains 13 months instead of 12. This increases their links to 384 days. Examples of such calendars are the Jewish calendar, the Indian calendar, and the Chinese calendar. All contemporary lunisolar calendars use a sophisticated intercalation scheme called the Metonic cycle. The cycle is made from 19 lunar months, uh, 19 lunar years, 12 of which contain 12 regular lunar months and seven intercalated years containing 13 lunar months each. In this cycle, the difference of 19 lunisolar years is equal to 19 solar years almost exactly. Such intercalation methods needed complex astronomical knowledge and written records. Quraysh, the tribe of Prophet Muhammad, had no access to such knowledge at the start of the 7th century AD. Instead, the Arabs used what is called an empirical method to intercalate their calendar, whereby they added the 13th intercalary month on the as needed basis. To do so, they ensured that the summer solstice day always occurred in Shawwal, the 10th month of the Arabian calendar. This method also ensured that the Arabian months did not rotate within the solar year, and thus their economic and social activities remained fixed in the solar year. In year 10 Hijri, corresponding to 632 AD, the Quran, the holy book of Islam, sternly, very sternly, banned the intercalation method of Quraysh. In doing so, it equated using intercalation with indulgence in disbelief. Islamic scholars and historians gave a superficial reasoning for the Quranic abolition of intercalation. A primary result of my research is proving with high confidence that the abolition of intercalation was decreed because in linking it with summer solstice, the Arabs strayed into paganism and the worship of the sun. An exciting result is a prophet had fasted all the Ramadans in the last decade of his life in Medina in a fixed period of the year. I prove that this period always started in May and ended in June. Islamic doctrine requires Muslims to follow the practice of their prophet in whatever he said, what he did or approved. I believe this is not the case when it comes to placing Ramadan in the correct season of the year. According to the reckoning by the Hijri calendar, Ramadan of this year will start on the 1st or 2nd of April and will end on the 1st or 2nd of May depending on the ocular sighting of the first crescent called Hilal. However, the calendar the Prophet followed all his life dictate that Ramadan of his year should correspond to the lunation starting in the 31st of May and ending on the 29th of June. That will, this will be for this year. It will shift from time to time, but only by 11 days. Now, these contradictions raised some very interesting questions. At the civic level, if the calendar's primary purpose is to organize the economic activities of a society, why Muslims accept a calendar which fails miserably to fulfill this purpose? At the religious level, why Muslims don't fast in the same period of the year as their prophet fasted? Why he followed an intercalated lunisolar calendar, but they follow a purely lunar calendar? After 14 centuries of this practice, the answers produced by Islamic scholars are still the same. The Quran forbade intercalation. The truth, however, the Quran specifically forbade nasi, which means Quraysh method of intercalation, but not all methods of intercalation. In the face of the hypersensitivity of the subject, I ventured to try answer these questions because the stakes are so high. There's no question that the fast of Ramadan is debilitating to body and mind. Having it, having it occur at a fixed period of the year will help Muslims world over to better organize their economic life to achieve the best potential possible to them. The best example of the benefits that could be achieved is that Ramadan will always occur during the vacation of the scholastic year. Studied Students of all ages will not have to study or give exams while abstaining from food and drink. As you can imagine, the problem I am tackling in my book is sensitive and complex. It is not restricted to calendrical systems only, but it is also entangled so much with the fundamental tenets of the religious beliefs of Muslims around the world. 
Thank you for listening.